Hey, this is Mayer. Here's my trace for the day. Traders, the uh, topic of our lesson today is how to, <laughs> you know, we, we talked about how to add to winners. Now we're going to talk about how to reduce size from losing trades. Before that, just a quick look at my PL today. Uh, I'm up like uh, $7,800, but the uh, game's not over because FUTU still could give me like uh, up to $2,000 loser. I think a little bit lo less than that. Uh, just a quick note about FUTU. We, you know, we took, um, we took FUTU trade long over 161.20, and that was a beautiful move to a new highs. Just before it moved to a new highs, expecting a new high, it had a nice reversal and moved to a new high. That was a beautiful trade and a very nice winner. My second trade did not work out so nicely. What is this spike up now? What just happened there? I don't know. I don't care. Let it continue. Whatever. Anyway, my second trade so far in red is um, just over 163 and I hope it's going to continue moving higher because the S&P does move higher and the Nasdaq does move higher but it's going sideways for a long long while so we gotta have a stop loss and probably I'm going to you know um, right now my stop loss is under 161 but we'll see about that soon anyway I'm gonna finish in green today I don't know exactly how much and whether FUTU is going to be another winner but what I do want to talk about today, which is, in my opinion, extremely important, is how to reduce size from a losing trade. And in this case, BABA. Now, as you could see earlier, I have a losing trade in BABA. I'm down $3,200, which is kind of low compared to the risk I took. My risk in BABA was greater than that, uh, meaning I could have lost uh, somewhere around five grand, maybe a little bit more in BABA today. But... Let's go through and understand a little bit what happened in BABA and why is my loss not as big as I originally um, had in mind that I'm going to risk. So first of all, BABA started with a gap down. It should be a gap and go. It tried to move higher. It failed. It came down. I shorted it under 228. I didn't quite get it at 228. I got it like 20 cents lower or so. So at that point, once it started to come down it looked like a nice trade moved under the lows but then spiked up and just went sideways so the question is what do you do with a stock that you expected it to come down and continue coming down would you keep holding to it would you expect it to keep coming down yes you do but where's the point where you have to admit that you picked the wrong, st the wrong stock now what is it about us human beings hating to admit that we're making a mistake? Did it ever, ever happen to you? Did, are you like me, like most people I know, maybe you're not, a person who hates to admit that he's making a mistake? Well, I can tell you most people hate. Uh, let's say you bought a new car and your friends would ask you, how about the new car? Do you like it? Uh, you will convince yourself you liked it. It's a terrible car. You don't like it at all. You think you probably made the best decision in the world. Uh, you know, some people just buy bad cars, right? It happens, but they will never admit it. They will always say to their uh, friends, no, I love this car. It's amazing. It's very nice. And that's exactly the same thing we do with stocks. We buy a stock or we short a stock, in this case, Baba, and we hate to admit that we did the wrong thing. So there is a time where the stock is really not going your way. Now, at, at, and at some point, you have to admit that you have done the wrong decision. So, would you sell the car? <laughs> I'm not sure. Would you admit it by, would you admit the wrong trade by moving out of this trade? It doesn't matter if you're up a little bit or down a little bit. At the point where I finally came to the conclusion, which was not easy for me, it was very hard for me to admit that I had done a mistake. I was down like 30 cents or so. Once it moved over 20, 228, 20 or 30, was it 40 cents? I'm not sure. So there was a point where I felt like, well, 
it's really just going sideways. I still gave it a chance to come down. It did not. It moved up a few cents. And right in this green candle over here, that was the point where I moved out of half of my quantity in BABA. Now, why didn't I move out all completely? Because I hate to admit that I'm making a mistake, just like you guys. I hate to admit that I'm making mistakes. So my, <laughs> I'm, my, I'm, I'm, my feeling is, since I hate to admit it, I, I do have some kind of a compromise here, that in a way I'm moving out of half of my trade because I'm still hoping that the second half would come down, crash down, and I will not have to look at Baba later and say, oh my God, I wish I would have had the whole position or I wish I wouldn't have moved out. So deep down in my mind, I'm still hoping that this losing trade, that this stock that is just going sideways, that definitely doesn't look like what I anticipated, that has nothing to do with what I anticipated to do in the first five minutes of uh, you know, once I move into a trade, look at uh, BA, for example. BA came down and just almost never looked back. I mean, looked back a little bit, but then kept crashing six or seven point. I can't remember. That's the kind of gap and go you expect to have. But what about BABA? BABA just went sideways. So my compromise is really to move out of half of my quantity. Is that the best thing to do? No, I should move out all together from all of my quantity that would be the right thing to do and sadly it looks like FUTU I have a hard stop there because I'm talking to you under 161 so you may soon see uh, my account number changes here if it comes down under 161 anyway so let's talk about BABA my, my, the way I compromised is by moving out of half of my size because it's for me exactly like to you it's very, very hard to admit that I'm making a mistake. So I can live with moving out of half. So what happened really here is right after I moved from my half quantity, it spiked up over the highs. It was my stop loss right here over the highs. And at that point, I needed to move out from the rest of my quantity completely. And I did. Now, the average between moving out at a small stop loss and moving out with half quantity at a my planned stop loss was in my case i think fifteen hundred dollars or something like that i'm not sure but probably something like that so i saved myself from partially admitting that i was wrong partially admitting that i was wrong i saved myself from a bigger loss now we, we had a lesson about this uh, we talked about it we talk about it quite a lot how to add to a winning trade I think I mentioned it yesterday. I was talking about how to add to a winning trade. You never add to a losing trade and so on and so on. Now, it's exactly the same thing. You add to a winner, you move out or you scale out of a loser. I scaled out of loser. Uh, when, again, when I think about what I did there, I should have moved out altogether. But I'm a human being. I'm exactly like you. I hate admitting the fact that I'm wrong. And uh, that's why I moved out only of half. So I'm not perfect. But I did reduce my loss in BABA and therefore uh, I'm happy I did that. And you need to remember that if stock is not going your way, there's a good reason for you to accept the fact that you did something wrong and that um, you're not supposed to be uh, holding it for, for longer. Now, you can argue that FUTU is exactly the same thing because FUTU is going sideways for a long time. It's kind of the same thing. That's true. But I only moved in at my second trade there with a, a small quantity. As I mentioned earlier, if you have a trade like FUTU that uh, the first one was a winner and you're doing great, then if you're adding quantity, you don't double down your quantity. Uh, you just, uh, I mean, that, that not adding to a winner, it's actually... Uh, taking a second trade in a stock that you already took your partial, once you do have your partial in a stock that, yeah, that you already have a winner. And I did start with FUTU. I right now have over more, more than $4,000 realized in FUTU. So if you do have that, then your second trade should always be smaller quantity, much smaller quantity than your first trade. And the reason is that is for that is that, you know, your second trade, 
Uh, once you take your second trade, you already feel kind of invincible. You think you know all about FUTU, and that's very dangerous. That's why you should be only taking a smaller size in order not to move from a green trade to a red trade. Once you put some money in your pocket, you never take it out. That's one of the important rules in day trading. You put some money in your pocket like FUTU, make sure it stays there. You can take out a little bit. You never take it out, never take all of it out. So the next trade, if you have a second trade in FUTU, is smaller size. How many of you guys had a second trade that drove them to a red territory? Did it happen to you? If you don't mind sharing that, uh, letting us know if this is something that uh, happened to you. I would love to hear that. But uh, definitely happened to me quite a lot of times. So if you at the point where you're taking a second or even third or even a fourth trade in stock that you already had a winner in, uh, well, uh, uh, when I started out as a trader, it happened to me so many times, really so many times. And there was a point where I finally realized that, you know, I need to reduce my size on the first, second trade or even the third trade and better not even take the second trade. You know, you, you had a winner, probably better stay away. I have to say my average second trade in a stock is probably much lower than my average success rate. My average success rate is somewhere around 68%. If I would have to check what is my average success rate in my second trade, it's probably over 50%, but I'm not sure it's uh, well over 60 or even 55. I'm not sure about that at all. That's why I always reduce my size. I don't trust my second trade as I trust my first trade. I don't want to move back to red territory and whatever, however, uh, money I put, whatever income I've put in my pocket, uh, whatever was my profit on my second, first trade, you never take all of it out. You just take out very small uh, size of it. That's it. That's my lesson for today. Hope you enjoyed. Hope it helps you. And if it does, we will really appreciate if you give us a thumb up. We did not uh, bully you guys in YouTube today about thumbs up like we did yesterday and you... <laughs> you did give us a new high over 1,000 uh, uh, likes and we liked it. And of course, that was a nice appreciation for you. And um, since there are so many of you here today, we would really like that you give us a thumb up today too. And uh, if you don't mind now clicking that button, also if you're on YouTube later. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for joining. I um, liked my uh, small, actually nice green trade today. And I uh, hope you guys did well too. So I'll see you all tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.